What do German gods and obscure psychological theories have to do with the present needs of our race? How does a topic seemingly so abstract impinge on the crisis that faces white people around the world? Photon, god of the Germans, was known as Odin to the Norsemen and as Woden to the Saxons. The old Germanic religion has made a significant comeback in recent decades with the worship of Odin and Thor and the other deities of Ausgard now occurring throughout Europe, North America and other locations around the globe. And I'm proud to have played a key role in that revival. But one doesn't have to be a literal believer in the reality of Wotan to appreciate his importance as an empowering symbol for the reawakening of the European peoples. This was the approach taken by the renowned psychologist Carl Jung, who thought of Wotan or Odin as an archetype, a kind of inherited symbol of great power in the collective unconscious, or if you will, in the racial soul of the Germanic people. While Jung believed that some archetypes were more or less universal, appearing in all human races, there was also much differentiation from race to race. The collective unconscious of the Chinese or of the Semitic peoples, for example, were not interchangeable with that of the Germans. This is a good place for me to say that the symbolism of Wotan is pertinent not only to those Germans living within the borders of the current German state, but all men and women of Germanic descent throughout the world. Indeed, for all practical purposes, the Wotan archetype is the driving psychic dominant of Europe. The archetype becomes active whenever the folk within whom it resides is threatened or when it is repressed and denied. In the early 20th century, the German people were threatened by industrialization, urbanization, and immigration. The unification of Germany in 1871 was, in the eyes of many Germans, merely a political event, and it disappointed those many Germans who yearned for a more spiritual, more romantic German state. The Wotan archetype manifested in the revival of nationalism, Germanic mysticism, the occult lore of the runes, and folkish culture. Figures of Jesus on horseback were eerily similar to the repressed image of Wotan. The neo-romantic youth movement, the van der Vöglen, took to the highways and byways in the spirit of Wotan the Wanderer, and the restless tramp of their feet gave way later to the aimless migrations of the unemployed, and later to the marching of soldiers. The ultimate result was the rise of National Socialism, followed by World War II and Germany's defeat. But defeat brought with it only a more savage repression of the Wotan archetype. Germans were now to be peaceful factory workers busily creating an economic miracle, making money. The denazification program was ruthless and relentless. The Allies did everything in their power to bury Wotan's furious ecstasy under gross materialism. Once again, Wotan was driven deep into the forests of the mind. The storm of steel was replaced by the gold of the Nibelungen. Men who had marched with the SS and the SA became factory workers, farmers, salesmen. So, does the awakening of the Wotan archetype necessitate National Socialism? No. Wotan or Odin is a much more complex figure than that. Notwithstanding his entourage of berserkers and Valkyries, he is only secondarily a god of war. His primary role is the quest for wisdom as the priest-king figure. The warrior aspect gained prominence during the Third Reich largely due to the hostile political and military situation that was making war inevitable. Wotan's wisdom was lost in the sound of the guns. Dr. Jung understood the deep psychology of what had happened during the rise of the Reich. He predicted that we have not seen the last of Wotan. Indeed, Wotan's severe repression in post-World War II Germany, which deliberately implanted a sense of overwhelming guilt in the average German, makes his appearance all the more certain. Repressed psychological forces do not just go away. They fester and grow stronger. The present-day invasion of Germany by Middle Eastern immigrants will only make Wotan's return all the more dramatic. 
How will he manifest this time? I believe we will see two things happen. First, there will be a violent reaction against the Islamification of Germany. Wotan will arise to defend his people. Although the average German may not want to admit it, the truth is clear. Even if not one more immigrant is allowed in Germany, there are already enough of them to change the face of Germany in the coming years and forever. If the politicians do not remove them, Wotan, whether you think of him as an archetype or as a god, will intervene to restore balance. Wotan now sleeps, but he will waken and he will be ready for war. But there is more to it than that. Jung foresaw an emergence of Wotan's wisdom aspect. He said, and I quote, if we apply our admittedly peculiar point of view consistently, we are driven to conclude that Wotan must, in time, reveal not only the restless, violent, stormy side of his character, but also his ecstatic and mantic qualities, a very different aspect of his nature. National Socialism would not be the last word." Unquote. I would go a step further and say that we need both the capability for violence and a deeper spiritual perception to give us the wisdom to properly apply it when necessary. Now let's look at the flip side of the coin. I've spent most of this video talking about how the content of the collective unconscious affects us, but I also believe that our deeds can provoke feedback into the collective unconscious. Our task is to reawaken the Wotan archetype. Or, in a more literal sense, we must call upon Wotan, the god, to come to our defense, but in a way that will be balanced and harmonious. How do we do this, you might ask? Simply by shaping our culture. Our deeds, our writing, our speech, the media we produce and the media we consume all shape the soul of our people. The memes we spread, the books we write, the plays and poems that spring from our pens and our keyboards, all of these shape coming events. For we are on a very deep level connected to all men and women of our race, wherever on earth they are found. And that's where you come in. You can help produce this awakening. And of course, that's why I'm telling you all of this anyway, not as some exercise in abstract psychological theory, but as a guide and a motivation to your action. The continuing political and social repression of all healthy survival instincts among the European descended peoples around the world, coupled with the crises facing us, will produce a manifestation of great power. It is our duty to steer this awakening into healthy, life-giving, and victorious channels. This is Stephen McNallan thanking you for watching and urging you to like this video and subscribe to my YouTube channel and to share it widely. Donations to support my work may be sent to the PayPal account you will find on my YouTube channel. Thank you very much.